Okay, I have some data here. I previously made a video where I uh, took took this equation and tried to fit it to this data where where Q is the number of widgets and L is the number of workers. And we held K constant and we and we held alpha constant and we tried to fit that the, the this this to uh, to this data. So let's go ahead and redo this like we did before. We'll go ahead and insert uh, a scatter plot and uh, let me just go ahead and uh, label things here. So I'm going to go to uh, chart design, add chart elements, primary vertical is equal to the widgets. And I'll go ahead and add another element. I'll do the axis table primary horizontal is equal to the workers, right? So, so each one of these dots is plotted out here on this scatter plot. And we tried to fit this. This is called the Cobb Douglas production function. And we tried to we tried to estimate K and alpha in order to fit it fit it to this curve. And we got a straight line, and we decided well, a straight line is not really the best fit because it's a curve. So so we got rid of the Cobb Douglas. And then when we tried to do, we said, well, we can use Excel curve fitting. We can go here, right click on this line and go add trend line. And so there's a straight line, there's exponential. And we found that a power of approximately fifth or sixth order fits this data pretty well. But one of the problems with this is if you, if you go here and, and go out like one or two periods, maybe go out two periods, and uh, try to fit it. The end behavior is really funky, right? So that's probably not what happens. If it drops off. It probably just kind of goes out like that. So we may not like that. So, um, so I went out to the internet and I found I went out. I, and I, there's a lot of places on the internet, and I just googled uh, what equation makes an S-shaped curve. And I found this website right here, and it's actually an interesting read. But I'm just just to summarize. I found this part right here, that that uh, an S-shaped curve. They use uh, something called a logistics equation, and S of x, which would be our Q, is equal to one over one plus the xp to the minus kx. X would be like our L. So k is a constant and a a is a constant, right? So they said you might be able to approximate with that. So let's go ahead and try that, and see if we can. Uh, approximate this s curve a little bit better so again we're going to go we're going to call this q hat because this is like, like for our predicted values and before we do that let's go ahead and uh i'm going to rewrite the equation a little bit so i'll copy it here into excel so i'm going to i'm going to do it this way and uh so we're going to be guessing beta and alpha and we're going to try to fit so L is the number of workers and Q is the output. So beta and alpha we're going to try to guess in order to get it close to this curve. Okay, so let's just start out with a 0.5 and a 0.5. We're going to make Excel figure this out. So so my predicted value is going to be equal to uh, parentheses 1 divided by parentheses 1 uh, plus the EXP to the minus. So I'm just following this equation down here. So my beta I'm guessing for right now is this right here. I'm going to F4 it to make it an absolute reference because I copy this equation across. I always want it to point to this. And then I'm going to take that times the number of workers. I'm not going to F4 that because I want it to move to these workers as I copy this equation across. I'm going to close that parentheses and I'm going to close it again. I have to close it one more time. And then I'm going to take it to the alpha power. And the alpha power we want to F4 also. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And then we can copy this across. And uh, let me format these all the same. Just kind of round them off a little bit. We know that it goes to more places, but just to make it easier to read, we'll round them off. So let's go ahead and add this to our graph. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go uh, under. When, when, you click on the, when you click on the graph, you get this contextual menu called chart design. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to select data. We already have the widgets. So I'm going to add another one. I'm going to add Q hat. And my X values are like these L's. And then the Y values are, are, are these values right here. And go OK. And OK. 
So this is what I get when I use 0.5 and 0.5. So we can make, so can we get Excel to guess this to make this a little bit closer to this? So what I will do, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and use Solver. And if you don't, and Solver something might not appear here. If it doesn't appear here, you can use, go go check YouTube how to get it to turn on Solver on your Excel. It's very easy to do. And but anyway, we're gonna go ahead and use Solver, and we want to do. Well, before you solve, let me stop. We want first we have to figure out the error, right? Because we have to give Excel something to work on. I'm gonna call it error squared. And the reason I'm squaring the error because the vertical distance between each one of these, some of the vertical distance are negative. If I subtract this minus this, this minus this, this minus this, some are gonna be negative and positive. So if I find the average, it's not gonna work out. So normally in statistics, usually you either square it or you take the absolute value. So we'll square it. So they'll just make all, all these distances positive. They'll make them, of course, bigger, but they'll be positive. And then, uh, so now I can say the error is equal to uh, the actual minus the predicted. Right? That's my error. Sometimes it's called the residual. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and square it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and format that as just two places. Too. So I'm going to copy this format down here and uh, uh, and then drag that across. So, so what we're going to do, we're going to find the average of those. And that's something called the mean squared error, MSE. And that's equal to the average of uh, these numbers here. All right. So we want to make that as small as possible. Because if that's small, that means all these distances between our predicted curve and our actual curve is very close. So if this is zero, they would be exactly on this line. Okay. So as small as that MSE is, the better better fit this is. So we're gonna be, so we're gonna try to fit this curve to the, to to uh, match this curve by changing these values and using this equation. Like we said, this this when I, we saw that this on the internet, we found out that that does an S curve, and that's what this is called an S curve. All right. So now we could guess by hand. I could go 0.4. I could use different numbers, right? I could go like 0.4 if I want, whatever, and then and then this is going to change us. But and then we'll, again, we want to guess these two numbers and try to get this as low as possible. Like I said, Solver is perfect for that. So I'm going to go to Data, and I'm going to go to Solver, and what we want to do, we want to minimize this. So I'm going to go minimize. So so this is what I'm minimizing the error. I want to minimize my error. All right. So I want to click on that, and then what I want to change is these two cells. Uh, and I'm not going to do anything else. We're going to just take the default with Solver, and I'm just going to go Solve. Okay, so what happened here? Oh, well, I have that on. I have that on. It needs to be on this number. I don't know how it moves. So let's go Solve. Okay, so it did it very quickly. It found... Uh, it kind of started to follow, and then it went flat. So what happened? Well... Uh, it says that the maximum value is one, so we weren't, so we have to tell tell this curve somehow to go up here. So he, they say here and and and, and uh, here that they they add like uh, they add a number and then they take a times a number. So let's try that. Let's uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to move this down, and we'll add uh, we'll call them K and S. And we're going to change this equation now. So now the change, now the equation is going to become this. So very similar to what we did here. They're adding this is like a constant, right? So we'll call that s, and they're taking it all times a constant. We'll call it k. And then they use, and this is like a con, this is like our x, so we won't worry about that. So, so I'm going to guess these. Let's say it's one and one for now. So now we have to modify this this equation here, right? So we have to make this. Uh, uh, we can go to the front. We're going to take this. And I'm going to go ahead and F for it, and then plus this. I'm going to F for it, and take it times all this. Okay, and hit enter. And you don't want you want to remember to copy this across. Okay, so, so, 
So now we'll let we'll go let solver do its job again. Let's see what solver does. So I'll go to solver. But now we're not doing changing two cells, we're changing four cells. Four 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 constants. Again we're minimizing, make sure these are all in the right spot, and we'll go solve. And go OK. And wow, that got pretty close. I got the MSE down to 0 0.01. So the last thing to do, remember the reason we did this is we didn't like the end behavior. So let's go ahead and take these out to uh, 10 and 11. And let's take this out. And let's just see what that looks like on the graph. So I'm going to click on this orange line. I'm going to tell it to include these. And look, that end behavior is a lot better. Like remember, like I showed you, that one that was using that power equation and end behavior is very... This looks like it probably is more what might happen in the real world. Okay. So we were able to fit that very easily. Uh, just by going to looking for an equation, we found that the logistics equation is better, even though Excel doesn't have it. And we are able to fit these constants, S, K, beta, and alpha, just using solver in order to, to do it. So solver is very powerful. Um, one thing I'd like to say, remember this Cobb-Douglas equation that we had? Um, one of the criticisms of that is that it's not, it's, it's not based on on theory is more like uh kind of what we just did it's more like curve fitting a curve to the data so so and this is could be a criticism of what we just did too you're just fitting a curve to the data and you're not using theory to come up with that equation so in economics you know it's a science um and so normally you like to use a theory when you when you try to come up with an equation like that so anyway uh hopefully that was interesting how to fit a curve uh you don't always have to go you know here and then right click add trend line if you can't find something that fits here maybe you can find an equation out uh, on the internet that might fit and you can actually try to fit it on your own all right so hopefully that helps if you like this video my picture will come up click on that picture if you haven't subscribed already and that will have you subscribe to my channel uh, like the video make a comment encourage me to keep making more videos thanks for watching bye